really ignore it until quite late as a writer, composer. And so the only way he could get his pieces played was by hiring, he would uh, hire a burlesque orchestra to play through some of this, the Concord Sonata, for example. He hired a, some guy playing for pasties in a bad crowd to, to, to play the Concord Sonata. And someone who heard that said, said I, can, I can tell it's, it's uh, good music, but it doesn't sound very good, does it? And he said, what's sound got to do with music? <laughs> Can't argue with that. I mean, what, I mean, you could, but you don't have to, you know? Well, maybe a lot, you know, maybe. The, the Europeans thought, because of the way he wrote, that he was a fan of Schoenberg and the 12th tone and all of that stuff, that he was right out there with the rest of them. But when they saw his, you know, conductor scores and stuff, he, the, the, the sections that where he really gets out there have instead of on Dante or, you know, in whatever direction you have written on there. His is, look, play it like a man. <laughs> so he loses a lot of his audience right there. And maybe a lot of the orchestra. Well, at the time, maybe not a lot of the orchestra. What am I talking about? I don't care. So. You know, the point for me is that, is that, is that it's a privilege to play. And if you... If you have a chance to play, you don't get to pick where you play. If you want to hear what you're doing and you can't play it for a crowd, hire a burlesque orchestra and get some clown. In. I mean, it's a privilege all around that it ever even happens in some faint way for you. A guitar sounds good if you just drop it on the floor. You don't even have to really play the thing. But if you get in there and you do get something going in there and people who want to listen, you're stuck with a privilege that is beyond luck. And, uh, it becomes the thing itself, you know. This is what the real playing is, what I'm doing by myself. And aren't these long sentences and they don't have any pause? Oh, wow, you're very tired. Yes! I have, a, I have a friend who complains, you know, that I get real jobs and he has to play, you know, these crap settings, you know, like a pizza parlor or something. And, and I have, I, you know, the last time that came up, I said, you know, I, I have played a library opening in the last five years. I've, 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 come on, man. I've, I don't play anywhere. What do you care where you are? You get to play. I've played prison schools, hospitals. They're all the same. There's no very little difference between them. But you, you, you can't. You can't expect to read an audience. I mean, there are people, you get asked, where, where is your favorite, where do you like to play? I mean, where's your favorite hall, your favorite city, your favorite crowd? And uh, no, you don't have that. My favorite is to play somewhere. So I've played, I played uh, uh, the federal prison in Minnesota and this first time it worked great. We're great. I, I had a ball and we we're all having a good time. But I speak for people who might have other things to say about that. But, but it, was, it was terrific. The second year I came back, played there again, and a little guy, you know, somehow had creases in his jeans and a little hat perfectly aligned. He came up to me and he said, hello. And I said, you were here last year. You don't want to say that to somebody in prison. <laughs> you know? But I did say that, and he said, you've put on a little weight, haven't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't, know, you don't know, you know, you can't. So I tell this guy, my friend, who thinks he gets all the bad jobs and I get all the good ones, I said, what you've got to do is play these places. So he did. He went to a grade school and literally knocked on their door, and they said, well, great. We're having, you know, what's your profession day? And uh, we've had a doctor and all of this, and you can be the musician. So he played for the first grade. And I know from experience that that is a tough crowd. <laughs> and uh, when he was done, there was a question and answer thing. And his first question from this crowd, and he figured he'd kind of nailed it, was, do you have a dog? <laughs> uh, straightened at it. Straightened him right out. I gotta watch my language. Over there.